Hey, Clint Coons here. And are you aware of the hidden tax trap that can catch you when you're leasing raw land? If not, then you're going to want to watch this video. Okay, so when it comes to leasing raw land, I see this more and more in this environment. People are acquiring real estate for development, but they're not ready to develop it yet because of the higher interest rates. So they're taking that property and they're leasing it to a third party for some use that they can make on that raw land. Maybe it's grazing cattle, maybe it's a parking lot of some sort, storing RVs, whatever it is. But when it comes to leasing land, the thing you need to be aware of is that the income you generate from your land leasing, it is considered to be non-passive income. Everyone sit and scratch your head going, well, what the hell does that matter if it's non-passive income? It does because if you're a real estate investor, this can be a problem for you when it comes to tax time. Let me show you what I'm referring to. So if I have rental real estate over here and my properties generate for me on an annual basis, let's say I'm pulling down $24,000 in rental income, but I'm using tax strategies to reduce that rental income, such as cost segregation and bonus depreciation. So I'm able to pull off of here $50,000 in deductions against this rental income. So what that effectively does for me is it takes the 24 and wipes it out. So I'll end up showing a $26,000 loss on my tax return. Great. Now, assuming you're not a real estate professional and we're not doing short-term rental strategies here, the problem with the land is that if I have land that I'm leasing out to someone, just the raw land itself, and it generates for me $12,000, you might be thinking you could take this $12,000 and use it against that $26,000 in losses. That's where you're wrong. Because the IRS will characterize this income as non-passive. This loss over here is considered passive. Therefore, you cannot use passive losses against non-passive income. So your rental real estate can produce losses for you where your land rental income cannot be used against those losses. And the thing about raw land, of course, is that you can't depreciate it. So you can't create losses on your land itself because it doesn't have structures. Now, there is the one workaround for you if you're a land investor. If you want to ensure that your land, if you're going to be leasing it, can be used to offset passive losses, then you need to make sure that your land itself is creating passive income. How do we do that? Well, it has nothing to do with how you rent the property. It all has to do with how that property is situated, meaning you look at the property itself and as long as 30% of that value can be associated with depreciable property, then that income is considered now passive. So here's what you do. When you look for raw land to buy, look for raw land that has an existing structure on it. It doesn't have to be usable structure. It just got to be a structure that you can depreciate. And as long as that accounts for at least 30% of that value, then you can take that land, lease it out. That structure doesn't have to do anything. And the income you generate from that land lease is now considered to be passive, which is where we possibly want it to be if we have passive losses. So that's strategy number one. Look for raw land that has a structure on it doesn't have to be a huge structure, small structure. All you have to make sure is that you get it appraised and it shows that it's worth at least 30% of the land value. Now, the second strategy that you might want to consider when it comes to raw land investing is that if you have, you know, your LLC set up over here and you've set up a self-directed IRA. Now, I have a separate video I recently posted about self-directed IRA investing. You should check it out and how you can use your self-directed IRA to invest into real estate. But here's where having a self-directed IRA makes a lot of sense for real estate investors, because if you're one of those investors who is investing in different asset classes, by having an IRA, you want to be using the IRA appropriately, meaning that you're making the types of investments that make the most sense for the IRA versus the investments you're doing in your own name. So in this particular example, what I would tell you is this. If I was a, I'm a real estate investor here and I have a couple of rental properties here and I'm not a real estate professional and none of this is short-term rental stuff we're talking about here. And I know from my real estate, I'm showing a loss every year. Now, I'm considering buying a piece of raw land and a new rental property. 
and I have this self-directed IRA set up. The question you have to ask yourself is, where do you buy this and where do you buy this? So if it was me, what I would do is I would buy the raw land in the self-directed IRA and I would buy the rental real estate in my LLC and put it in this structure. The reason why I'm going to do that is because if I buy the real estate out here, that's passive. So the income generated from my real estate can be used to offset my losses. Whereas the land, I don't have to worry about structures anymore. This is non-passive income that comes in from my rents. That all flows into my self-directed IRA and I don't have to pay taxes there. Do so you see setting up structures can help actually help you with your investing. It's one of the things that I tell people time and time again that when you have the right structures in place, they're going to help you do more when it comes to real estate investing. The mistake that many investors make is that when this opportunity comes along, they don't have the right foundation in place that allows them to take action in a smart and efficient manner. So if you're an investor, consider setting up your own self-directed IRA or call us. We can help you set up a solo 401k, which you can do the exact same thing in. And then when these opportunities come along, well, then you'll know what to do based upon this video. Guys, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe, and then you'll get notification whenever I release new content. Take care.